You are now listening to the J Ports Experience. Listen free on iTunes or at theandybearshow.com. Now, here's Jay. Yo, what is the word, people? Welcome to another action packed edition of the J Porks Experience. I'm Jay Porks. With me, as always, on the other side of the glass, making sure this is a well oiled podcast machine every week. The ever popular nobody. I've got a few things to get to. I had some stuff to get to. And then Spin Magazine wrote an article that I'm going to read to you right now. Okay. I spent Halloween at Rough Trade Records seeing the Meat Puppets. It was awesome. But apparently, not not so awesome at the Freddie Gibbs concert where two people were shot outside Rough Trade Records. This is about 59 minutes ago we're getting the... uh, I'm getting the news here from Spin Magazine, and this will be my first read-through, so when I butcher all the sentences, you know why. Earlier this morning, two men were shot outside of Brooklyn's Rough Trade Records. Rough Trade following the conclusion of a Freddie Gibbs concert. According to the New York Post, one victim, age 29, was shot in the leg, and the other, age 33, in his hand after a gunman allegedly attempted to attack the rapper himself at 1.13 a.m. That's crazy. Let's continue on. Both victims are expected to survive and were transported to Bellevue Hospital in stable condition. The New York Post has a timeline that shows Gibbs leaving the club. The club? It's it's a record store. I wouldn't call it a club. Leaving the club shortly after 1 a.m., at which point an unnamed man, who, according to surveillance footage, had spent the evening trying to blend into the rapper's entourage inside the Williamsburg record store and performance space, ran up to his car and fired fired, fired several shots. There is no word on the shooter's whereabouts, though he was spotted fleeing by foot on North 9th Street. Yeah. Since that's the block it's on, I would consider that. (laughs) And this is... Gibbs says to reporters on the scene shortly after the incident, they tried to kill Tupac, they tried to kill me. Nah, (laughs) I don't, I don't see it. I don't see the Tupac comparisons, Freddie Gibbs. Where is Freddie Gibbs from? He's a rapper from Indiana? Anyway. So somebody was shot outside Rough... Two people were shot outside Rough Trade Records. Now that's... That's not going to ruin my time at Rough Trade Records, because I'm going to tell you about me. I want to talk a little bit about me here. Now, since last year, since I started the podcast, I believe, Rough Trade Records had just opened. It's a record store slash music venue in Williamsburg. They have one in London. Now they have one in Brooklyn. It's an awesome place. Here I thought I was going to walk into this little damp room that smells like a basement. And the band was going to perform on top of a stack of 50 um, 50, uh, CDs, 50 uh, vinyl records. I was trying to think of a really bad artist. Or a funny artist to use there, but my mind went blank. And I thought it was going to be that. I thought there was going to be like 50 people there. And I thought it was going to be this this big, uh, this small, cramped, weird environment. But no, it's not. it wasn't that at all. This is like vintage vinyl in St. Louis. This is like a Mobia in L.A. This is a huge... Record, it's a record store that looks like a supermarket. It's very well lit. There's two floors. There's a second floor. They've got vinyl everywhere. They even had Meat Puppets vinyl. Like in the store. Which is something I don't know. I haven't seen outside of Boulder. Every time I'm in the I'm in Williamsburg and I pass by a record store. I'm always thinking. Uh, I always go in just to. I always go into a record store just to see if they have the meat puppets. Because if they have Rat Farm, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to look at where I was thing. 
and I'm always looking for vinyl that they don't have on the tour. Because on the tour, they only have, they have Up on the Sun, they have Me Puppets 2. They've got Me, Me Puppets. And they might have, they might have the, uh, they've got a couple of CDs over there. I don't, I'm not sure if they have Huevos. Huevos is really good. I was delving into Huevos and Mirage last night. And I'm just saying that those are, because they played Confusion Fog. And I don't remember them playing Confusion Fog, although I've seen it on the set list many a time. I don't remember them playing it, so I wanted to listen to it, and I was listening to those albums. Those albums are freaking epic. They came out in the same year. They put out both those albums that year. Huevos and Mirage. Check it out. Well, Mirage, then Huevos. That, that's the order. Rough Trade Records is huge. Humongous. I got a picture. I took plenty of pictures. I wish... I wish that the stage was inside the record store, like inside this well-lit record store area, because at least there's lights. But, alas, open a door to the back, and here we have a real-life rock venue. It's like a Bowery ballroom. It's like a small, small Bowery ballroom. They've got the floor. They've got the balcony up top that wraps around your cookie-cutter regular rock venue, which is cool because it's inside a record store. My only beef, well, I don't have a beef, but you guys know that I am so sick and tired of, it takes me three hours to get to concerts, and I really wish that somebody liked the same music as me and I would buy them into shows. I was actually, <laughs> where I was sitting upstairs, I was sitting next to two folks from Bayonne, a couple from Bayonne, but they took the train in from New Jersey. Sad Kitty Emoticon. Drive in next time, bro. Rock that ride home. You know what's also good about Rough Trade? It's owned by the Bowery, by Bowery Presents. Bowery Presents is a is um. It's well, venues are either owned by Live Nation, Bowery Presents, or they own themselves. Bowery Presents is the booking agent that owns the event. Bowery the Bowery Presents owns. Mercury Lounge, Terminal 5, you know, they, there's your small to big right there. Your smallest being Mercury Lounge, your biggest being Terminal 5. It's not Live Nation. Live Nation owns Irving Plaza. Live Nation owns PNC Bank Art Center and a lot of the bigger venues that would you would find yourself being treated like garbage by the event staff. See, usually you go outside to smoke, you go outside to smoke a cigarette, and there's a event staffer there, and he comes out and he says, Hey guys, you guys gotta stay behind the behind over here. There's a line, there's a there's a gate, and that's where the smokers are gonna go. And if you go too far, you're not coming back. Make sure you gotta stamp everybody. Make sure you gotta stamp. Take it down the block. That's what you normally get. I went outside, I lit up a cigarette, the guy's like, hey, comes up to me, the nicest fucking guy in the world. He looked just as, just as tough as anybody who worked at a Live Nation venue, but he comes and he says, hey guys, me and Chris, me and Chris Kirkwood are smoking a cigarette, not to drop names, let me pick that up. Me and Chris Kirkwood are smoking cigarettes, and he says, hey guys, could you please, he's so nice, <laughs> he says, could you please just go over there where the where we have a, a section to smoke cigarettes because the lady who lives in this building complains a lot. Wow. The lady who lives in the building complains a lot? That venue is going to be shut down pretty soon. And what's funny about walking through Williamsburg? You walk through Williamsburg and one block is cruddy and then... It's got two brand new apartment buildings on the block. So, it can't be that bad of a neighborhood if I can't get an apartment for a million dollars over there. Which is true. Got Williamsburg Park over there overlooking the water. That is an expensive, expensive neighborhood to live in. And it's still Brooklyn. 
So, like, when I was coming home, I was still walking through Brooklyn at 1 o'clock in the morning, and I still wasn't a fan of that. I thought those days were over. I thought, when I was 11, and I moved out to Staten Island, I thought the days, the days of walking through Brooklyn at 1 in the morning were over. Who would have thought that they were just beginning? Who would have thought that they were just beginning? Treated like human beings by by uh, event staffers. It's very odd. Cass McCombs. Let's talk about Cass McCombs for a second. Really, really good set. Just the kind of tunes that you needed on a tour with the Meat Puppets. They've got a little a steel a steel slide pedal thing. It's not a slide guitar. It's not that. It's something else. It's a steel pedal, I believe it's called. And they went into some jams. They played they played soft songs. They played heavy songs. They played long songs, short songs. Then, like, they were jamming. They were changing, changing sounds, bouncing extended jams off each other. And then all of a sudden, I'm looking at my, looking at my clock. Not my clock. I'm looking at the phone because, let's face it, it's coming up on 1030. I've got a long way home, and I need to know when the Meat Puppets are coming on. So Cass says, uh, this is going to be our last song. And then they started playing what sounded like the opening, the opening section of Metallica, The Unforgiven. But every time I listen to Taurus by Spirit, I think it's Stairway to Heaven. So I let it go for a second and it was it was the unforgiven on halloween cast mccombs covering metallica and it was fucking awesome it was amazing i threw some i actually threw a snippet on my instagram of it. first of all i never do video snippets on instagram i've only done a video snippet on instagram when there was a bum sleeping on the bus talking to himself or or was something or it was drunk people talking to each other I never do video snippets but I did it because I thought there was just like a tease but then I pulled out my camera and I taped the rest of the 4 minutes of that of them doing it it was awesome the guitar player killed it I mean the guitar player not Cass McCombs Cass McCombs was killing it too sounded like fucking Metallica this room was like the room was looking around and then I was just, I was just saying, get the fuck out of here. No way. No way. And then every, every chorus break, I was like, oh my god, I can't believe they're doing this. It was so awesome. And that might have been when my cannabis oil was kicking in. Because I, I had somebody, because <laughs> I guess if you're, if you're, if you're a white lady who's, who's older, they don't, you're allowed to bring things on planes. Because somebody there, somebody in the crowd, had um some some cannabis oil for me to try. I'm not gonna mention any names, but uh, I put in they put in some coffee for me, and it was very it was very awesome. And I, I was I was flying. I didn't even notice that I hurt my leg. Because I was up top, I was trying. You know what they had? They had um a railing, but the railing was blocking my camera so I stuck the camera between the two spokes of the railing and that was me all night now the only problem I had was that I should have went down I should have uh, started my evening downstairs or at least spent some portion of my evening downstairs because had I taken pictures from the floor I might have some pictures if you go to my review at contactconfessions.com it's a lot of videos and a handful of pictures. You know what I do like? I do like Kurt playing with the hair down. Because now we only got two members of the Meat Puppets with long hair. Shannon and, and Kurt only have the long hair. Elmo has opted for a Jack White-esque haircut. Hey, plays guitar good like Jack White. Might as well get the haircut like him. It's cool to work for a band. It's all, It's also rad when the band tells you to stop losing weight. Like, you guys are rock stars. You're not supposed to know who I am. But the Meat Puppets came out and 
tore shit up. But definitely should have, definitely should have spent some time on the floor. Definitely should have done that. And it was, it was fun times. Me Puppets, they didn't come out, they didn't do any of this set acoustic, which I was excited for, I thought they were going to do. But they did throw in the seven Spanish Angels cover. They did throw in Confusion Fog. I'll give you the set list right now. I wrote it out. What do you mean? Seal Whales, Coming Down, Monkey and the Snake, Plateau, Touchdown King, Seven Spanish Angels, Oh Me, Hey Baby, K Paso, The Texas Tornadoes cover, Up on the Sun, Sam, Confusion Fog, Lost, Waiting. Let's pause for it. Well, wait. Waiting, I'm a Mindless Idiot, Open Wide, Kathy's, Kathy's Clown, Lake of Fire, Sloop John B, Aurora Borealis, and Backwater. Waiting. Look at them waiting. In a dream. Anyway, if somebody films me serving food and cuts it up to the three minutes that waiting is, we'd have ourselves a music video. Because that's, that's, whenever I'm waiting on tables, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about that Meat Puppets team. And Hey Baby K Paso is on the seven inch. They they released a split seven inch with Cass McCombs before the store. They've got some at the merch table. If you're going to see the Meat Puppets and Cass McCombs, they've got some seven inches. <laughs> hey baby K Paso is the A side. Serving as the B side is the Meat Puppets doing Kathy's Clown, the Everly Brothers cover. So it's a split seven inch with no original tunes. But the interesting factoid. Here's a factoid. On Kathy's Clown. Elmo Kirkwood sings the vocal. And if I'm correct. That'll be the first. I think that's the first Me Puppets thing that Elmo Kirkwood is on. There will be some Elmo Kirkwood money coming into the, coming into the house pretty soon. Good time. Good time. I would have bought it, but I don't have a record player. You know. The struggle. The struggle's indeed real. And also, it was Halloween. It was Halloween at Rough Trade. So I got to see some awesome costumes. Oh, by the way, I wanted to say this. Because a lot of people are going nuts. First of all, my name is Jay Pork, so if you tell me I'm a pig and I'm gross and I'm male chauvinist, duh, yeah, I know, I'm not fat, so the, the pig thing has to be something. Yes, I am a pig. Yes, I am thirsty. And yes, I did say last week that all Halloween costumes should be purchased at Victoria's Secret. I did say that. And then it was cold. And then I understood. It's cold. What do you want me to do? I'm not going to... I was freezing my balls off. There is no way I could expect girls to be naked. There's no way. But I did see some awesome costumes. My favorite solo costume was there was a kid with a with a holster, but it was empty. And he had a sign on his shirt that said, Unarmed Black Man. Awesome. Awesome. I'm also a huge fan of team costumes. Like the Ghostbusters. There was three Ghostbusters and the big Malamar guy. That's awesome. I my friend my friends Pam and everybody, they did Orange is the New Black, I'm pretty sure. Which is amazing. I so want to be loose check. I don't have a thick enough mustache to be porn stash. Nor am I creepy enough. Hell, I'll be fucking crazy eyes. I don't care. I'll fucking start peeing outside your fucking bunker. We all, I also saw a Happy Meal on the ferry. One person was fries. One person was the burgers. <laughs> okay, how cool is that? The team costumes are awesome. I also... I want to say this, too. If you're white... And you want to be a black person, 
for Halloween, and that involves painting yourself black? Hello, racism. Glad to have you back. That's what that is. I know two people. I know one person went to a dead celebrity's party as the notorious B.I.G., painted themselves black, painted their lips lighter, light-colored, and total, and ignorance happened. Ignorance happened. You can't paint, I also know somebody who was Dennis Rodman. And you know what happened, you know what that entailed? A mask. Yes, a, a mask, like a normal person. Not, this person didn't paint themselves black, they decided to buy a mask. Do you guys know who Al Jolson is? The jazz singer? You can't paint yourself black. It's called blackfaced. You can't do it. You're not allowed. It's racist. You're actually allowed. It's within the confines of the law. But it's racist. It's racist. And don't pretend it's not racist. Just accept that you don't care that you're setting society back a couple, 50 years. Just admit that you don't care about that. Crazy. You're gonna paint yourself black? And then you're gonna put the lipstick on? Come on. I thought racism was over. I really did. But anyway, Rough Trade. Rough Trade was fun. It's a venue I would. I missed Thurston Moore there a few days ago. It's a fun venue to go unless you're Freddie Gibbs and you're getting shot. Because, you know, he's Tupac. They tried to get Tupac, they tried to get me. What do you mean? Oh, my God. We'll get to the headline back after this. Hey, everybody. It's Andy from the Andy Dare Show here. Just want to say that I am super proud to have the Jay Porks experience be part of Dare Network. And if you want to keep my little podcast network completely free, all you got to do is go to theandydareshow.com, look on the right-hand side of the page, and you'll click on the Amazon banners for all your Amazon needs, and you'll tip your cap to the Jay Porks experience and all the fine broadcasting here on Dare Network. Also, be sure to follow Jay on Twitter at Jay Porks. Instagram at jporks, and jporks.blogspot.com. Thank you so much for listening, and back to the jporks experience. And we are back. Let's send our congratulations over to Oregon, Alaska, and Washington, D.C. for voting yes to legalize marijuana. I'm happy about that. I know that Congress has 60 days to block the law, and they probably will block the law. But hey, it's a place on the East Coast in my time zone that I'm allowed to grow plants in. And right now I live in a place where if I'm smoking a bowl outside, they'll throw me in prison. So... To be excited that a Greyhound for thirty-one dollars from Manhattan takes me right to Penn, right right to Washington D.C., where I can make some new friends, find a new job, and relocate would be good. They have a rock venue. They have the uh they have the Black Hat, don't they? They have the Rock and Roll Hotel. There's stuff there. Anyway, so Washington D.C. Anyone. It's not like Colorado, and it's not like Washington State. You can't buy it in stores. But I will. I have a list of stuff. Basically, if you're over the age of 21, you can possess up to two ounces of marijuana for personal use. You can grow no more than six cannabis plants, with three or fewer being mature flowering plants, with the person's within the personal's principal residence. Which means I can grow. Six plants in my house, as long as three of them aren't budding yet. Six plants, three that bud at a time. I also have the right, a D.C. resident has the right, 
to transfer without payment up to one ounce of marijuana to another person 21 years or older. So I can transfer it to you. And... and use or sell drug paraphernalia for the use, growing, and processing of marijuana or cannabis. So now you can use and sell drug paraphernalia. With a vote of almost 70%. 70%. But hey, you know, we're going to let Congress fuck that up. Speaking of Congress fucking things up, I now live in a red state. Republic, well, we all do, I guess. Republicans won big on election night, including my own hometown of Staten Island, re-electing Representative Michael Grimm, even though he was indicted on 20 counts of fraud unreporting wages and unreporting revenue while running an Upper East Side restaurant, keeping two sets of books, like a mobster. It says, uh, this article, this is an article written by, it's at salon.com, I will, Chris O'Brien. It says, this morning, as reporters and pundits announced the, announced the indicted Congressman Michael Grimm's win over Dominic Recchi and Staten Island. It's hard for them to hide their amazement, disgust, shock. As, reluct as a reluctantly proud Staten Islander, I agree with this guy. I am reluctantly proud. I picture their listeners and viewers at home adding Grimm's win to their already slanted view of Staten Island. Jersey Shore, Sammy the Bull, the Landfill, and now a crook for congressman. In the land... In the land of prescription pill addiction and heroin use, our representative... Now, remember, you might know this guy from... He wanted to throw the New York One reporter off the balcony. That's what he wanted to do. And that got caught on TV. And he still won. This is where I live. I live in... In Staten Island, also known as Texas North. That's what this is. Crazy. So, if you're in D.C., clear that couch off, because I'm on my way. All right, let's get the list of websites you need to go to to help keep me in business. We've got contentconfessions.com. It's for all your live music news and reviews for the fans. By the who? Oh, by the fans. Right. Two new reviews. I already spoke about one. Me, Puppets, and Cash McCombs at Rough Trade Records. And the Insane Clown Posse brings Shockfest to St. Louis. There are some awesome Insane Clown Posse pictures. And you can check that out at contactconfessions.com. Our buddy Bees Nuts went to uh, Pops. Was it Pops? Yeah, I think it's Pops. Yeah, Pops Concert St. Louis. Also, you can go to ChristinaRocks.com, Hang the DJ, 89xradio.com. I swear. Every time I turn it on, I just know how to turn it on when the song I hate is playing. But I turned it on for a little while. I actually turned it on, fell back asleep, and woke up for the 11 a.m. hour. She's got the Time Warp. She hosts it. 89xradio.com every Sunday morning. Throwback Thursday, except it's on Sunday. It's Throwback Alternative. Stuff like, stuff like, Posies Dream All Day, stuff like, David Bowie, Modern Love, Blondie, The Tide Is High, Flaming Lips, She Don't Use Jelly, Stooges, 1969, stuff like that, Lemonheads, It's a Shame About Ray, 
Rancid, Ruby Soho. Rancid has a new record out. Where? Left field. Hi, left field. Nice to meet you. All right, so you can let, go to ChristinaRocks.com. There's no H in Christina. Hang the DJ. 89xradio.com every Sunday morning. Also, we've got who's on TV this week, and I swear this is this week, as the headlines are always powered by Annie Quiet. Yet again, it looks to be an excellent week in musical guests, featuring Father John Misty, The Flaming Lips, Stevie Nicks, Alt-J, The Melvins, and Herbie Hancock. Since this isn't going to hit the airwaves until Tuesday night, we'll start from Wednesday. Well, okay. Thursday, the Flaming Lips are on Conan. Tuesday night, that's tonight, the Melvins are on Last Call with Carson Daly. Carson Daly loves the Melvins. That's the second time the Melvins have been on that, sh that show that nobody watches. Thursday on Kimmel, Cobra Starship featuring Icona Pop. David Letterman's got Foo Fighters rerun tonight. Kimbra, Kimbra on Wednesday. Maypie on Thursday. Theophilus London on Friday. And that's over at AntiQuiet.com. Also, you can watch Nick Oliveri reunite with Queens of the Stone Age for five songs on Halloween. I think it's on Halloween. It's got to be on Halloween. As predicted by the former bass player himself, Nick Ovaleri joined Queens of the Stone Age on stage once again at the band's special Halloween gig, which took place last not last night, which took place in LA's The Forum. The performance was preceded by opening gigs from The Kills, J.D. McPherson, and Nick Oliveri's The Uncontrollable, marked Queens of the Stone Age's very last gig of their successful tour behind the also successful dot 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 like like clockwork. Now, if you remember me, I was hanging out with Nick Oliveri in, uh, in Colorado earlier this year. That's what I was doing. He was on, they were on tour with the Meat Puppets. Him, Dean Ween, Guy Heller, all of the Moist Boys. Also at AntiQuiet.com, this is a good one. So AntiQuiet has sessions. And these sessions feature bands who come in and play for our buddy Squirrel, who is the head honcho over at Antiquiet. I don't quite know how he how he does it, but he manages to get a room, get a band, and they do sessions. Toadies did one, Jessica Hernandez and the Deltas did one. Well, the biggest one so far. And the most pr and the proudest one that is happening right now, according to our buddy Squirrel, is and according to me too, against me. On on one hand, I'll read this. On one hand, the last thing we want to do is contribute to Rock Press making a big deal over against me front woman Laura Jane Grace's gender transition, not because it's insignificant and certainly not out of any kind of unease. Quite the contrary. When she walked into our studio late last month with Adam Willard, all we saw was an amazing woman performing the fuck, performing the fucking great kind of powerful art that we all exist to share with you. When I rave about this band with friends, endocrinology is not my focus. It just shouldn't matter at all. So they played Fisherman's Blues, 500 Years, Transgender Dysphoria Blues, How Low, Black Me Out. The whole album's good. I liked the album when it came out. I like it now, but I liked it when it came out as well. There's an AOL original series called True Trans that Laura Jane Grace is the focus of.
and you can check this out over at AnnieQuiet.com. All the dates and details for their tour is at AgainstMe.net. Great album. I thought it's really cool that she stayed in the band. Usually chicks leave the band and they go out on their own. She didn't do that. That's cool. Also, stream the new Dead Weather tracks. Buzz Killer and It's Just Too Bad. Jack, Allison, Little Jack, and Dean are back with new tunes, and they're awesome. Hmm. I like the Dead Weather. I was always down with, with, with uh, that Jack White project. And also, um, we've got a review of Primus taking a trip to the chocolate factory. And this is long form. I ain't reading that. And you know what I hate? I hate these people who comment on things. Like, I love when people comment on things and they make a big deal out of things. <clears throat> like this person Marcos Garcia says I know that the photo of the band used to illustrate the review is just that illust illustratory but it depicts the band in 2010 promoting their then upcoming album Green Naughty Ride which showcased another drummer the original Primate one Jay Lane so making a review with the subtitle stating Primus most famous lineup it's not just a demonstration of having done good journalism re journalist research but the exact other way around and a comment from squirrel if you knew it was meant to be illustrative of the subject material then why did you keep typing that stupid comment and then someone else says why have a comment section if the pro if the progenitors of the website are going to take offense to the comments provided and Squirrel says, if our response is to stupid comments discourage you from commenting, that's not our problem. Why, ha why, why have a comment section so we can all talk about stuff? Respond to criticism, accept it, or rebuke it. Just because we assert ourselves when other folks are too chicken shit doesn't mean we're actually offended or mean to discourage you from voicing your opinion. It's not like we're censoring anything. A couple of middle fingers never hurt anyone. Nut up. I like it. People are such dicks. Just like, oh man, you know what there is? You know what's happening this week? This week, Dave Grohl is big on dissing singing shows like The Voice and American Idol. And I get it. Yeah, he's, he's saying that people look on TV, they see people waiting in lines for eight, eight hours with thousands of people to perform and they think that that's how you become famous. So I, because I'm an asshole, I, um, I went to the link and I said, Dave Grohl is just mad that he would never win one of those singing contests. And the people went crazy. They started going after me. They were like, you're such an idiot. J uh, Dave Grohl has the best rock scream in the past 25 years. No, he doesn't. He does not. But really what got me is that people started commenting saying, So what, you like American Idol? No, I hate American Idol. I, he's right. <laughs> he's right about the singing shows. They're bullshit. But I'm going to take this opportunity to troll the Foo Fighters any chance I get. And then they started saying, they, people started going to my Facebook profile. They saw that it said I, I'm social media for the Meat Puppets. They're like, Jay, it's not our fault that the Meat Puppets never got big. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't mention any of the bands. I just said that David Grohl is better as a drummer than as a singer. That's all I said. People went ham. People went ham and cheese. That's how ham they went. They went nuts.
First of all, I'm a I'm just trolling you for fun. Calm your titties. I hate singing shows too. And let me ju I'm just going to say this again in public so people can hear me. Record this, play it back. Dave Grohl is a great person. Looks really cool. I want to smoke a doobie with that guy. I just don't want to hear him sing and play guitar. That's all. Is that like crazy? People say guitar was his first instrument? Really? Can't tell. I can't tell. And another thing, these dark pictures, I was thinking about Foo Fighters Chicago, Sonic Highway is Chicago. I'm thinking about these, these dark pictures because I'm afraid to snap the Flash ever since Scott Lucas yelled at me that time for using Flash photography in a dark room. But one of my friends pointed out to me, well... I didn't see Scott Lucas on the Chicago episode of Sonic Highways, so what the fuck does he know about music? Yeah, fact. <laughs> Valid. I'm not arguing. This just in. The Foo Fighters to play a crowdfunded small show after Sonic Highways on Sunday. Breaking. And another thing, I'll continue talking about this. First, Trent Reznor came out and said that uh, paying for music is a relic of a time gone by. It's a relic of the past. It's not going to happen anymore. That the new generation is not going to pay for music. Taylor Swift pulled all of her music from Spotify, her entire catalog, this is an example of rich people mad that they're not getting richer. Hey, Trent Reznor, how big is your house? Are you, You're at the point where, first of all, what about the Beats, Beats, uh, the headphones, you and Dr. Dre and the app? What about that? You're already finding new ways to make money. And you know, you know when fans shell out for their artists, you know when they do? At concerts. So... Re revamp Nine Inch Nails a couple of times, keep going on tour, and you'll make some money. All these kids love vinyl. And by kids, I mean everybody. So don't tell me that they're not going to buy your vinyl. Where, where are they going to get it? How are they going to be hipsters? How are they going to be cool? How are they going to be able to tell you, oh, you haven't heard it on vinyl? You, you get to hear the... <laughs> in between songs so it sounds so real oh the track's over hold on you don't, you don't like that added sound effect to your music that's not good you don't like a needle scratching against leather that's not cool anyway trent they're all gonna buy your music maybe not all the people who steal things are gonna continue to steal your music like they always have the way to get people to buy your music is not complaining to get people to buy your music. No one feels bad for you. You're not, this isn't poverty. You're not on welfare. You don't use food stamps. Nobody feels bad for you. Sorry. Same thing with Taylor Swift. And I'm going to read a piece. I'm going to read a piece from Some Kind of Awesome. Uh... This girl wrote this kibby. Maybe we should all spend a little se spend a second being nice to Taylor Swift and Spotify. It's not their fault. Well, it might be Swift's to an extent, but I'll get to that. Either way, especially in this case, we should be throwing mad shade in big machine rec label groups one direction. Not her or Spotify. We should also probably be upset that not much has changed from an overall industry standpoint to benefit musicians since streaming services came to town. It's no secret that Taylor Swift thinks that music shouldn't be free. Last year, she wrote an op-ed piece in the Wall Street Journal where she said it's my opinion that music should not be free. And as my prediction is that individual artists and their labels will someday decide what an album's price point is. I hope they don't underestimate themselves or undervalue their art. This is all well and good, 
ta-da, you most certainly are not wrong here. But maybe instead of insisting on that, that the technology trying to, but instead of insisting that the technology trying to work with you is to blame, maybe it's the folks you got in bed with when you knew full well that they are notorious for trying to pay your art, pay your kind as little as possible for their work. First of all, props, props to Kibby for using the term throwing mad shade in a piece. That's awesome. Like, I thought that was reserved for street corners in Bushwick. But no, no, it, it's, it's in the piece. Throwing mad shade. I had to look up what that meant on Urban Dictionary before I read it to you. I just told you I don't care that, t that I don't care that Trent Reznor's uh not making that extra 20 bucks an album. I could give two I, there are there are no fucks left to give about Taylor Swift. You are a privileged white girl. What do you would have succeeded anywhere you went? You could sing, you could sell perfume at Macy's. You'd succeed. Want to know why? Because you're an attractive white girl. And attractive white girls go far in America. Attractive white people in general go far in America. That's how America works. You don't write good songs. You write simple songs for simple people. And then you got mad that you were only making 1.5 mil. You made one point one and a quarter million dollars on album sales this year. The only artist to make over a million in album sales this year. And that's not enough. She pulled the thing from Spotify. She has a new song, Welcome to New York. Get the F out of here. I'm supposed to care that this privileged white girl is not getting much. Here's the deal. We all know that Spotify and Pandora and streaming services, we all know that they don't pay much. We also know that they pay more to the artist than Napster did. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the streaming service gives you, say the streaming service, every time your song gets listened to, you get a half a penny. I downloaded your whole discography in 1999 from Napster, and the computer crashed, and it's all gone. And you didn't get a dime off that. I'm sick of the rich people complaining about not being rich. Like they might have to might have to sell the mansion and move into a condo. Might have to invest in some in some stock options or something. Maybe start a 401k. Maybe put some money in a CD account and let it grow. I never hear of artists talking about how they put money in the bank and this happened. All I hear about is how they don't make money. Do they have accountants? An accountant will teach you how to make money. If you have money, you can make more money. It's oh, You're always able to make more money. That's what America is like with banks and interest and stuff like that. If you have money, you can make more of it. It's people like me who have no money that are having problems. If you have money, you can make more of it. You can always double your dough. Crazy. Trent Reznor. I care. Matters. I care a lot. Anyway, everyone's out there, everyone's out there saying, go vote, go vote. Half the people are saying, go vote. Half the people are saying, how do you vote when you know that voting doesn't matter? Make a decision. All these people want to do is complain.
Like if I don't, if I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually have a sociological experiment tonight at work. I'm gonna tell one table that I voted, and I'm gonna tell another table that I didn't vote, and I bet you I'm gonna get the same outrage. When I tell the table I voted, they're gonna say, "Oh, why are you voting for? It doesn't matter." And the table that I tell that I didn't vote, they're gonna say, "Oh, you gotta vote. Every vote counts." Unless it's weed in New York City, I'm not voting. I don't care. Don't care. I don't want any part of it. Okay. Speaking of work, I have to get there. So let's give you the... I'll tell you the list of websites you need to go to to help keep me in business before I get up on out of here. You go to contactconfessions.com for all your live music, news and reviews, for the fans, by the fans. We got Meat Puppets, Insane Clown Posse, Meat Puppets, Mastodon, all that stuff happening. We've also got HangTheDJ.com, Christina Rocks, 89XRadio.com every Sunday morning. The Time Warp, Throwback Alternative. We've also got TheAndyDeerShow.com. That's for all your podcast needs. Now, whether that's... Whether that's, what am I saying? Whether that's the Tyler Kale Show, the Andy Deer Show, or the sultry tones of the Jay Porks experience, you get it all at the Deer Network, theandydeershow.com. Do not forget the the. It's a key thing in this URL. And when you're there, click the ads, Amazon, Uncle Bubs, buy stuff. You're going to buy stuff anyway. And listen to Andy because... Don't be selfish. Don't just listen to me. And, as always, the headlines are always powered by Andy Quiet. Andy Quiet is your source for quality. Until next week, folks, have fun. Whiskey, weed, warrants, Yvonne. Wait. This has been the Jay Parks Experience. Thank you so much for listening.